So, you think billionaires give away their money just because they've got hearts of gold? Did you know that in 2021, the wealthiest 1% of Americans got a whopping $200 billion tax break from charitable giving? Imagine you're a billionaire sitting on a pile of cash so high, you're practically using $100 bills as coasters. Would you rather hoard your fortune or donate it if it meant you could dodge millions in taxes and get a shiny hero badge? If you chose to donate, bingo, you've cracked the billionaire philanthropy code. Today, we're peeling back the layers on billionaire donations and spoiler alert, it's not just about saving the world, it's also about saving their wallets and sometimes their reputations. So strap in and get ready to see behind the philanthropic curtains. First up, the golden image of billionaire philanthropy. Think Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Mackenzie Scott. These folks are the superheroes of charity swooping in with mega bucks to save the day. Gates has thrown billions at global health through his foundation. Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, pledged to give away 99% of his fortune, mostly to Gates Foundation. And Mackenzie Scott? She's been tossing millions at various causes faster than you can say tax deduction. On the surface, these actions seem like pure, heartwarming kindness from superhero billionaires with wallets instead of capes. The media eats up their feel-good stories like their glazed donuts, giving them so much credit for using their immense wealth to actually make the world a bit less crappy. But here's the reality check. When billionaires donate, they're not just feeling all warm and fuzzy. In most cases, they're scoring some serious tax breaks, boosting their public image and influencing policies in ways that align with their business goals. Take Mark Zuckerberg. In 2015, he and his wife, Priscilla Chen, pledged to give away 99% of their Facebook shares through the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Sounds noble, right? Well, plot twist, it's set up as an LLC, not a nonprofit. This lets them invest in for-profits, make political donations, and lobby for legislation, all while pocketing those sweet tax perks. So while they're giving away their money, they're still pulling the strings and influencing markets and politics. It's like donating cookies, but keeping the recipe and the oven for yourself, or getting applause for swapping money between your left and right pockets. A classic case of what some like to call philanthrocapitalism. Imagine if Zuckerberg and his wife just cashed out their Facebook shares instead of earmarking them for charity. They'd have to pay a whopping capital gains tax on all those fat stock proceeds. Or let's say they simply passed that wealth down to their kids when they bite the dust. Hello, massive inheritance taxes. The IRS would swing by like an annoying cousin looking for a handout. But by doing this whole donating stock thing, they can nimbly avoid both those taxes. Who needs a tax-hungry government dipping into their fat stacks when you can donate it away, all philanthropic-like? Genius! In philanthrocapitalism, philanthropy isn't just about being nice. It's also a killer PR move. Having trouble fixing the mess you helped create, like the Silicon Valley housing crisis? No worries. Toss a few million bucks at it and call it a day. Just like when the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative threw a $3 million grant at the housing crisis in the Silicon Valley area in 2017. Or think of Jeff Bezos, who announced the Bezos Earth Fund with a $10 billion pledge to fight climate change. Headlines screamed about the largest philanthropic gift in the environment ever, hailing him as the eco-savior we didn't know we needed. Sounds great, right? But while he was saving the planet, Amazon's carbon footprint was skyrocketing. In 2021, Amazon belched out over 71 million metric tons of CO2, and the same happened in 2022. So much for being green. Critics argue that the Bezos Earth Fund was as much about repairing Bezos and Amazon's image as it was about combating climate change. Amazon was facing backlash for its environmental practices, including excessive packaging, emissions from its delivery network, and its energy-guzzling data centers. This philanthropy shifted the spotlight from Amazon's environmental mess to Bezos' supposedly green generosity. And the best part? All those billions pledged means major tax breaks, letting Bezos slice and dice his tax bill while everyone applauds his climate crusade. It's the classic billionaire playbook. Give big, look good, and save on taxes. Amazon's Earth Fund is philanthropy, sure, 
but with a hefty side of self-interest. So next time you see a billionaire playing the hero, look for the twist to the tale. Philanthropy sometimes even serves as a smokescreen to hide some nasty stuff. The story of the Sackler family is a prime example. They owned Purdue Pharma, the company that created and aggressively marketed OxyContin, one of the primary drugs fueling the devastating opioid pandemic in the U.S. Purdue misled doctors and the public about just how addictive Oxy was. As people got hooked and overdose rates skyrocketed, investigations and lawsuits started piling up against Purdue. So what did the uber-wealthy Sackler clan do? They tried laundering their reputations through good old philanthropy. They donated millions upon millions to museums and universities, basically throwing money at prestigious institutions to get their family name plastered everywhere. Museums like the Met, Guggenheim, and Louvre rebranded wings as the Sackler Wing after receiving dirty donation money. Education heavyweights like Harvard, Oxford, and Yale set up Sackler institutions. It was a total PR ploy to deflect from their company's shady opioid dealings by trying to position themselves as generous patrons of the arts and education. Like, hey, forget about that whole profiting off an overdose crisis thing. Look at this fancy new Sackler building that we funded. Eventually, as more details emerged about their role in ruthlessly pushing Oxy, the tide turned. Universities started rejecting future Sackler donations and even stripping the Sackler name off existing buildings and programs. The Sacklers basically used philanthropy as a shameless PR campaign to try washing their hands of their company's culpability in America's opioid nightmare. Sam Bankman Freed, the crypto whiz kid, provides another cautionary tale. He was hailed as a philanthropic wonderkind, promising to improve global health and fight poverty using his crypto riches. But when his shiny FTX exchange went poof into thin air in late 2022, Bankman Freed's $16 billion net worth evaporated like it was being burned in an NFT. With the empire crumbling, all his lofty charitable commitments to organizations, especially in Africa, went up in smoke too. Turns out their anticipated donations were about as real as Crypto Bro's ridiculous mane of hair. It's fair to say that billionaire philanthropy is a mixed bag. Sure, their money can do wonders, eradicating diseases, improving education, and funding groundbreaking research. Bill Gates' funding for malaria research has led to significant advancements, and Mackenzie Scott's unrestricted donations were a lifeline for many grassroots organizations during the COVID-19 pandemic. These contributions are legit and impactful, but let's not kid ourselves. There's a strategic, sometimes downright self-serving side to their generosity. By carefully picking where and how they donate, billionaires can enjoy tax benefits, boost their public image, and influence policies and societal trends in ways that align with their personal interests. It's perhaps capitalism's biggest PR trick. Make everyone think you're saving the world while ensuring the system keeps working in your favor. All right, all right, let's give Zuckerberg and his lady a golf clap for their mega donation act. And yeah, gotta tip your hat to Gates for kicking off this whole billionaire giveaway craze. By all means, celebrate when their money goes towards solving problems and helping people. But don't get too starry-eyed next time you hear about a billionaire donating millions. There's likely more to the story than meets the eye. It's a world where charity meets strategy, and generosity often comes with a juicy side of, what's in it for me? What do you think? Is billionaire philanthropy a genuine force for good or capitalism's slickest PR scam? Drop those hot takes in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and smash that like button like it owes you money. Subscribe for more Juicy Finance Fun and share this video with your friends who might be curious about the real scoop behind those big bucks donations. We'll catch you next time.